Okay, now we're going to take a look at Captor X, which is the brand new reactive load, attenuator, and impulse response loader from Two Notes Audio Engineering. Now, this unit really is a game changer. Uh, within this unit, you are able to plug your favorite amplifier in without a speaker. So that means silent practice, silent recording. You can be silent on stage at gigs. You can load uh, either two notes own impulse responses, so virtual speakers. It comes with 32 virtual speakers. It comes with eight microphones and even eight rooms, different environments to have your virtual speaker in. With this unit, two notes have really raised the bar. This is an all-in-one unit, whereas the original captor was just really a load box. Now we have the uh, reactive load. As I said, that means you can plug your amplifier into it without a speaker. It's a uh, an attenuator. Put that between the amp and the speaker, and you've got three different levels of attenuation. So you can really crank the amp up, and it's not going to be deafeningly loud coming out the speaker. And also, we have the impulse response loader built into this. So whereas the original captor was just the load box, now we have... Uh, the, uh, the technology within this rather compact unit. But that's not all. Two Notes have also included some studio grade processing. Um, normally uh, with their equipment, it's all about creating a great raw sound that can be manipulated and used within a studio environment. But now for that wow factor, those of you who want to use your amp at home, but want to just use it for the to, to, for practice, you can run your amp into Captor X, put a set of headphones in and have glorious uh, reverbs. There's even a uh, like a double track uh, effect in there. So if you're playing rhythm parts, it sounds like there's two of you. Um, there's an enhancer section, there's uh, EQ. And as I said, you can uh, also change the environment in which uh, your virtual speaker is, is virtually sitting. Well, I should also mention this is MIDI. So if you are using any form of MIDI foot switch, or if you're amp, I've got my JP2C over there, that's got MIDI on it. Um, a really cool thing is, is that when you change different patches or different channels, you can have different cabs and this will change uh, so you might for your cleans you might have a 2 by 12 for your crunch or high gain stuff a 4 by 12 so it makes your rig even more versatile as well as that this is bluetooth so you can do all your editing of your sounds even uh, on your on your ipad or even on your phone so let's take a look at the front panel First of all, we have the output level that's the global output level of the unit here we have a, uh, a voice control. Now this is just a, a basic sort of tone uh, filter, um, a very basic EQ. And you can use that to just sort of tune the sound or tune your tone um, depending on where you are, the environment you're in, or if you've changed amp and you just want to sweeten the sound up a little bit. It's a very powerful little control that. We have the space control. So as you turn that up, that will engage more reverb or um, in your virtual environment, but also you can uh, select that control to um, operate the, the, uh, the spread of the tracker uh, part of the software which we'll uh, we'll be talking about in a moment down here we have a little switch where you can select through some of your favorite presets on on the uh, fly uh, there's your headphone output there for silent practice and then we have uh, an input level switch there so uh, if it's a little bit too hot going in you can just push that button in and it will stop it any clipping on the rear of the unit, we have two XLR outs. Yes, this unit is stereo, and there's a multitude of different applications here. You can just use it in stereo, have a nice stereo spread with the uh, the tracker or with the reverb, um, but you can also then do dual, dual mono mode, so you might have all of your reverb coming out of one output or um, uh, and then the dry signal out of the other output. Uh, the one thing that I was really excited about with this unit is that I like to run a silent wet dry wet setup. So with this having two outputs, it means that I can send one output direct to the sound guy, which is my dry sound. And then the other output will then power my uh, post effects, which in the case of my rack there, it's chorus or delay. And then I come out there in out of the out of the back of the rack in stereo. And you can do that with, uh, you know, a multi effects unit, you can do it with something as simple as a chorus pedal or a delay pedal. 
You've got your input, where you come from your amplifier, from the speaker out. For the demo track, I've been using, or I used my uh, Mini Rectifier, um, just straight out of the speaker out of the Mini Rec and into Captor X. Um, we've also got a speaker, um, an output to go to a speaker cabinet, uh, so for using the attenuator. We've got a, a little mini uh, socket in the back there for uh, connecting a little mini uh, a MIDI cable which uh, it's got a little, a little adapter so you can plug it into a full-size uh, MIDI cable that will then plug into any MIDI device. We've also got a USB so that you can attach Captor X to your computer, which is ideal for managing your impulse responses, managing your library, and also for purchasing and downloading uh, new uh, impulse responses from the Two Notes store. So now let's take a look at the features of Captor X and have a listen to it. I've got my iPad in front of me for ease of operation so I can have a mess around with some of the controls and you should be seeing this on your screen roundabout now. So uh, there we are, that's the layout of the, uh, of the app on the iPad. Um, you can see in the top there we have our room and our cabinet, our two microphones. Up the top there we have a button which we can swap between um, mic A and mic B. If we look down the bottom we've got the input level. If I just strike my strings, you can see the input level on the uh, left hand side over the right. You can see the output level. Uh, starting from the uh, left side, we've now got a gate. We've got a control at the top there, which is for soft or hard gate. And we've got the button at the bottom, which is learn. So if I turn my guitar up, there's a certain amount of hum in the background. So if I just press learn, like so, let me press. Oh, turn the gate on first. That would be a good, good start. So press learn. And there you go. It's told me to mute my strings. And now I've got a gate. Uh, so I've got no noise. Uh, then we've got the miking sections. We've got mic A and mic B. You can select between either having the mic on the front or on the rear of the cabinet. We've got the level. We've got the distance. If I turn the distance, you can see the microphone moving. And the axis is the position at where the microphone is uh, on the center of the, of, the, uh, of the cone or to the side. Several different controls under here. We've got bypass. We've got mute and then we've got a, uh, a phase control. Then we've got mic B. Uh, we can, if, if, I should mention if I tap on the top where it says in the blue bar, you've got your different microphones there. So you can select from a variety of different condenser, dynamic and ribbon microphones. And you get different microphones depending on what speaker you're using. Uh, and if you, you purchase more speakers from the two note store, you get even more mics. So, uh, Onto mic B, uh, same layout again. And then we have our left and right level. If I pull that level down, um, if I double tap on it, like so, there you go. Took a couple of goes, but we got there. It goes back up to zero. Now to the top of the page, I should just point out as well, we've got a little information button there. When you hit that button, it will give you some information about the cabinet and the different microphones, which is always good. Uh, then we've got this other blue bar, which gives you the option for selecting your presets. So I click Torpedo, and there we have a load of different presets and space for user presets. We've got the Save button over there, and you can title your presets as well. And those presets can be called up by either the control on the front of the unit or via MIDI or via the app as well. So now we have EQ. Let me turn everything off. I'm going to turn off the reverb and the EQ. Uh, at the top there, we've got a little button that selects between bass, guitar, bass, and custom. So it's like a parametric EQ. So I'm on uh, guitar. I'm going to turn that on. Let's have a listen. So let's um, fool around with the EQ a bit so I can cut some of that uh, low mid. Or boost. Yeah, getting very, very flappy. If I double tap, that will go back to uh, the zero. Bit of 360. I always like to cut a little bit there. That's that sort of boxy sound. Push up a bit of 800 for the eddy sound. And then a bit of top end sparkle as well on there. Don't want to go too mad. 
So there's the EQ. Underneath that, we have the enhancer. Now, this is really cool. Um, we've either got it for guitar or bass. I'm going to select it onto guitar. Uh, we've got a wet and dry blend. How much of the enhancer effect you're actually hearing versus the uh, the, the natural sound. Uh, we got the body control. The body control is a kind of a compressor, I, I, I guess. Um, and it also has some uh, kind of low cut as well. So it can really be used to tighten up the sound. If I push up, I'm going to turn the, the thickener and the, uh, and the brilliance down a little bit. Let's turn the body up a bit and I'll turn, turn the effect. Yeah, you can hear that's compressing there. Oh wow, that's really tightened the sound. Yeah, the sound's got a lot more focus. Okay, then we have the thickener, which is like a resonance control. We can turn that up, get some low end in this. That's quite full on that. <laughs> Use sparingly. And then we've got a brilliance control as well. We can turn that up. Let's turn the enhancer off. So you can really hear that's kind of uh, tightened the low end up and added a little bit of that sort of brilliant sheen on the top of the sound, a little bit of bite. And let's go to the reverb control. Let's turn that on. Uh, the little blue bar, that's where you can select your rooms. At the moment, we're on Studio A. Uh, we've got the wet control here. If we crank that up, uh, we've either got room or ambience, and we've got a variety of different controls there, so we can make our own custom reverb. That's the sound of that room. I can also control that on the front of the unit, um, if I turn that. Oh, wow. So, uh, for practice, this is just the joy. You know, I've got my little amp there, uh, um, just plugged into this tiny box and with my iPad, and it, it sounds absolutely, uh, absolutely fantastic. So, let's have a listen to some of the other rooms. Um, let's have a listen to what a basement might sound like. I don't know if my basement sounds like that, but that's apparently what a basement sounds like. Dry sound. Uh, some of the halls, what we got, hall A. There's uh, quite a lot of reverb on there. I'm just turning the space control down. Okay, so um, uh, yeah, there's the actually sorry, I did it on the dry wet setting that controls. You've got two different settings there, so you've got like the the stereo sort of enhancement. And then if I tap that button again, you've got the dry wet blend. So now it's dry. Sorry, I had that round the wrong way a moment ago. That's pretty cool. There's a plate. Really, really nice sounding studio quality effects. I'm going to engage the uh, twin tracker now. And what this does, it just emulates um, having another guitar player. So I guess it's putting some kind of offset delay. And that's really cool. It's a really nice effect, giving you that sort of double track feel. So I just wanted to take a moment to look at some of the different speakers and the sounds that you get when you move the microphones around. What I'm going to do is uh, you'll be able to see the display again on your screen. I'm going to bypass 
um, uh, the uh, uh, chat, the mic B for the time. No, actually, I'm going to bypass it. I'm going to mute it. I'm just going to mute it for the moment. So we're only hearing um, micro uh, chat, the mic A. I'm just going to change that to wet and dry. I just want to dial off a little bit of reverb. This again is still that first preset that I've been using. So uh, here, what cab have we got here? I'm guessing this is uh, some form of um, four by twelve. Um, it says uh, th this is ideal for drop tuning, but let's let's change the cabinet. So I'm going to go down here to this icon that says cabs. I'm going to go to guitar and let's have a look at four by twelve. So these are the uh, four by twelve uh, speakers that are included. Let's go with. Um, Brit C, vintage C. So here we go. This is, I'm guessing, like a, a Marshall style cabinet. This is one of the cabinets that I used on the pre, one of my presets, or a couple of my presets for the track. Um, here's the cab. And now what I can do is I can just drag that microphone around. Or I can use the controls on the bottom. So, uh, Let's um, pull the distance in a bit closer, move it off axis. That's a ribbon microphone, so let's have a listen to a condenser. Or a 57. Where's, the 50? Where's my 57 gone? Hit the wrong one. So now we can bring in another microphone. So I'm going to tap at the top there to mic B. And uh, for that, let's, um, I'm going to unmute that. I'm going to use a uh, condenser. And uh, let's mute now uh, mic A. Move that slightly. Now bring in mic A with that, hold on. And then we've got the controls with the mixer. So you can see how easy it is and how much the sound changes by dragging the mics around. Obviously I'm just sort of moving these a little bit randomly at the moment for you. It just shows how many different impulse response captures must have been done to enable you to move the mics around, you know, and get all of the uh, the, the different sounds that you create um, just by moving a mic. I'm just going to mute, actually, uh, that one channel, uh, mic B, mic A, and I'm going to go onto the back. That's pretty cool. Uh, if you can mic the rear of the cabinet. Let's have a listen to a uh, to another cabinet. So I'm going to go down here to cabs. Let's have a listen to uh, tuba 12 now. What we got tuba 12? Voice 30. I like that cabinet. It's a bit like a like a Vox. So you can hear, you know, the different tones that you can create just by changing the uh, speaker. It really, really does shape the sound of your amplifier in a way that you you wouldn't be able to do this, you know, unless you had a multitude of different uh, cabinets at your disposal and different microphones, which obviously would be very costly and uh, uh, you would le need a, a large amount of real estate for your storage. So hopefully that gives you an idea of some of the features and also the different sounds that you can create by moving the mics. As I said, I'm just randomly moving stuff around here for uh, this demo just to give you an idea of how much your tone will change. So now I wanted to just play through the tones that I used on the little demo track at the front of this video. The idea was to try and use some different sounds, some medium to high gain sounds, uh, some sort of push clean sounds, uh, some wet and dry sounds, some very focused dry sounds, the tracker, and also uh, a, a bit of a, a, you know, a lead solo sound as well. And I wanted to use a mixture of different cabinets, 4x12, 2x12 and 1x12. The first sound that we have, this is the intro uh, riff, and this is a, uh, a, 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 a wet uh, and dry sound. So I'm in the dual mono 
uh, setting and I believe, yeah, looking at the screen, the wet sound is in the left, which hopefully, yeah, it is. It, it's in my left ear anyway. So here's the riff. This is what I play so you can hear it isolated. So for the next tone, this was the verse tone, and I wanted something a little bit drier sounding. So this, I'm just on the standard stereo mode, just a little bit of uh, uh, ambience in there. But you can see I'm using the EQ, the enhancer, and um, two different microphones. What am I using there? A Dynamic 57 and a Ribbon 121. So let's have a listen to the tone anyway. And this is a 4x12 cab. <laughs> Now on to the next tone for the chorus. I wanted to demonstrate the uh, intro riff, but with the twin tracker feature. So uh, similar tone, still using the 4x12 with a 57 and a ribbon mic, a bit of uh, enhancement and uh, EQ, and I'm using Studio Studio A. I had to look there. So let's have a listen to the uh, verse, uh, sorry, the chorus riff with the twin tracker engaged. Here we go. So this was the tone I used. Okay, so on to our next tone. This was uh, a Wamba 12 cabinet, and I'm using like a little Fender style cab. <laughs> And it's totally changed the sound of my amplifier. It's got, you know, a lot smaller. It's got that sort of honky sort of tonality that you uh, associate with those little Fender combos. I'm also using a plate reverb as well. Nice lush reverb. If I change the space control, we can turn that right up and get some nice, uh, uh, the, the stereo uh, spread. Sounds fantastic, that. Okay, so now on to the final tone that I used for the intro demo track. And this was using a 2x12 cabinet. I wanted to have a little bit more of that top end sizzle. Um, I'm only using one mic on this, just the uh, Dynamic 57. We've got some EQ, a little bit of enhancement. I've pushed the body control in here for some reason. Um, I, I, you know, these sounds I've, I've been we're done kind of fairly quickly. And obviously, the more time that I spent with this unit, and I hope to spend with this unit after this demo, uh, the more uh, you know you would get used to, or I will get used to these uh, different settings. I'm using a chamber effect as well. I'm just going to uh, uh, again experiment. I like this control where you turn up the. The stereo expression so it's almost like a little bit of echo in that uh, in that sound as well which was really nice for uh, the lead <laughs> So on the on the track there was no extra delay added. Everything that you were that you heard on that solo was coming from the effects uh, that are part of the uh, of the software for Captor X. So before we wrap things up, I just want to talk about a couple more things. Um, as you can see, I've moved and I'm now using uh, my JP2C and my rack. And uh, I just, um, I've been very excited about getting Captor X for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons is that I like to run my rig uh, wet, dry, wet, but using uh, two notes equipment, using uh, impulse responses. 
as opposed to using physical cabinets. Now, I've done this before, but I've had to use a couple of units, so I've run into some issues with phasing. Um, but now with Captor X, because it's got two outputs, I can run it in dual mono mode. Let me explain the way that I've got this set up. First of all, uh, I have to look here just to remind myself on the iPad. Uh, the left channel, um, I'm coming out of the speaker output, that's going into Captor X, and the left channel is going directly into my um, audio interface. Now, the right uh, channel is uh, feeding my post effects. Now, the way that my rack works is that the uh, Echo Pro and the Modulation Pro and this TC reverb that gets used once every however many years. I'd, I'd mainly use these two units here. Uh, those are post effects. All the effects in the trays uh, that you see here, those are our front end effects. So when this rack was built for me, uh, these were in the uh, for send and return. They were post effects. And then getting into using uh, a decent uh, digital um, uh, speaker emulators and load boxes uh, it, it enabled me to 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 get rid of my cabinets and have a silent rig I'm sending the uh, the other output the right output is driving these effects on the back of the rack I've got lots of ins and outs so I'm going in I'm driving the uh, delay and the chorus and then I'm coming out of the rack in stereo and that's a stereo emulated signal I've gone in in mono I process the sound and then I'm coming out. I've got the uh, mix 100% wet on my effects and then I'm coming into my patch bay here with these uh, two cables. So I've got on, the, on my audio interface, I've got a mono channel of um, dry signal and I've got a uh, stereo channel of effects. The other cool thing actually is that um, I've also gone from the MIDI through of the JP2C in to the uh, Captor X. So this is, this is awesome because now I can have on my clean sounds, such as this clean sound that I've got here, I can have, I'm using a uh, Fender Twin style. I could use a Vox cabinet. I could, I could use anything I wanted because I've got uh, lots of cabinets at my disposal, lots of virtual cabinets within Captor X. So on my clean sound, let me d demonstrate how this sounds first of all. So there's the clean sound. That's the dry sound. So now I'm going to hit it again and this will activate the effect. Now, to me, that's, that's just heaven. I've got complete separation. I've got the, the dry signal in the middle, and there, where I'm coming out the back of the rack uh, in stereo, I'm panned hard left and hard right, and those are on a separate channel. Now, here's another really cool thing that I'm incredibly excited about. Because I can store everything on this mixer page, if you like, um, I can actually store the level of the output. So I can set the, the level of the fader to have more or less effect depending on the patch. So thanks to the MIDI switching uh, that uh, is uh, capable with Captor X, depending on what sound I'm have, I, I switch to or what patch I switch to, um, I can have different speaker cabinets and uh, different level of effect. So I literally have a digital mixer now as well. So absolutely... Um, <laughs> Yeah, very, very cool. So uh, I can now switch over. I'm going to go onto my crunch channel. So as soon as I've hit that, we've now got uh, a Mesa style 4x12. I'll turn the delay off. Turn the delay off. So you get that nice separation between the delay. I've got 
too much delay going on right now. I literally uh, have just been experimenting with this and I would spend a lot more time sorting out the sounds. I, I, I have uh, other impulse responses that I prefer. I really like the uh, two notes Mesa Boogie Packs. I think those are fantastic, the two packs, the World Tour and the Studio Edition, where um, they're both the same sets of cabs but just different microphones. So that's a, uh, that would be my favourite choice of cabinets. <laughs> So that wraps it up for this review. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I really hope it's given you an insight to the uh, flexibility and versatility of this new unit from Two Notes. This is a fantastic unit. It's got so many different applications, whether you're going to sit at home and practice with your amp, headphones plugged into the front, making use of the, uh, the studio style processing, you know, the double tracker, the, the kind of very spacious reverbs, the enhancer, the EQ or switching all of that stuff off and just having a very raw tone for recording or implementing some of those um, those uh, uh, studio style processes for, for, for working live. Uh, there's lots of options as regards to uh, routing. Um, the possibilities are endless, you know, so it's just up to you to be as creative as possible. Anyway, that's it for me. Um, please like, uh, subscribe and share and uh, continue tone chasing and hopefully I will see you back here soon for more videos on gear and geeky guitar stuff. Bye for now.